Tommy me. Now you can see, right? Boleh nampak kan? Boleh, boleh. Okay. <coughs> Last week lecture, uh, uh, currently uploading because uh, there is an, uh, some errors in my, uh, apa tu, in my conversion letter from the uh, Zoom recording to uh, to apa tu video format. So, sekali lagi after the class, I will share the link. Tengah tengah download, tengah upload dekat YouTube. Yeah, and then insyaAllah Prof. Ismi will join us after this. Okay, hold on. Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to everyone. Sorry for the technical error. Okay, uh, so this week, so we are ready to proceed further with our research method topic. Okay, so the first topic we are going to discuss with uh, regarding the research and research process. Okay, research and research processes. So this is a very basic uh, regarding the research now. Okay. So this is our LO at the end of the session, students uh, are able to define what is research. Okay, explain the purpose and importance of research. Why is it important in our daily life? Describe the, uh, the research processes, identify research in human resource development, determine the research ethics in human resource development. Okay, so what is research? Anybody? Anybody from research department? What is research? Other than just want, we want to fulfill fulfill our department's uh, KPI. So, what is research? Hmm. Oh, by the way, the lecture note already uploaded in our Putra Blast. You may download from there. Sorry for the last minute because I always keep updating my lecture note. Okay, so you can uh, download from there. So, what is research? Okay, so research ni comes from the two uh, two words, eh? re and search. Okay, so uh, it is a Greek word. Okay, the prefix is a re ni referring to the again, a new or over again. Okay, re ni referring to again, a new or over again. So this is what we learn during our degree classes, if I'm not mistaken. Eh? Masa degree dulu pun kita dah belajar dah benda ni. Uh, this one, kita refresh balik je. Okay, and then search referring to uh, the uh, verb. Okay, in which we want to examine closely and carefully to test and try or to probe something. Okay, so search ni, it is related to any verb or any method. Verb ni method lah, eh, that we use when we want to collect or uh, when, we want, when we want to figure out something. Okay, so really, we do it again. Okay, so and then, so in overall, eh, according to uh, Grinnell 1993 page 4, Okay, it is referring to a careful, systematic, passion study and investigation in some field of knowledge undertaken to establish facts or principles. Okay, so research ni, okay, dia adalah the main intention we want to conduct research adalah we want to establish a new fact, a new knowledge, a new principle. Okay, we want to, uh, to establish new findings. Findings ni equals to new knowledge. Okay, knowledge in what area doesn't matter, but a new knowledge, new process, new innovation, and so on. Okay. So, sebenarnya, if we relate to our daily life, so does we do it regularly or we just do it officially? Hmm. Research ni. I think officially we can't do it. Hmm? We can't do it officially. Though. Professional eh? Professional. Okay, Official. let's see. Okay. This is another definition by Grinnell, Grinnell 1993. Okay, he stated that research is a structured inquiry. Uh, so this is where uh, Grinnell, they had pointed out or highlight the criteria of research. 
Tadi the general just now the general definition of research but now he struck he highlight he highlight the uh, element or criteria or characteristics of research. Research is a structured inquiry that utilize acceptable scientific method. Uh, so maksudnya to consider we conduct a research make sure that it must be a, must be from a structured inquiry. What is structured inquiry? Uh. It must, okay, it must follow with step-by-step -step procedure, okay? Acceptable scientific methodology, meaning that we follow a scientific method to solve problems, okay? To solve problems means that we conduct research after we figure out there are something in the literature, something in the practice that need to be resolved. Okay, we do not just conduct a study, a research just to complete our uh, our study, eh? but we make sure that we figure out something missing. Okay, so then we want to resolve that issue. Okay, then we create new knowledge that is generally applicable. Okay, so we create the knowledge that we created, it must be applicable, practicable. Okay, it's not just a new knowledge and then we, we put it in our bookshelf. Okay, next one, uh, this is... a. Uh, Longer definition, eh? By Lundberg, 1942, page 5. So, scientific methodology consists of systematic observation. Okay, so it, uh, it can, be, can be in terms of motivation, uh, sorry, observation, classification and interpretation of data. So, these are the steps, among the steps included in research. When we want to conduct research, these are among the steps included. Okay, now, obviously, this process is one in which nearly all people engage in the course of their, their daily life. Okay, the main difference between our day-to-day -day generalizations and the conclusions usually recognized as scientific method lies in the, degree, in the degree of formality, rigorousness, verifiability, and general validity of the letter. Okay, so nowadays, eh, we can see that... Uh, our, our government, particularly in Malaysia, trying to promote that don't share what you don't, what you are not sure. With this effort, actually, eh, behind it, we can see that our society need becomes more aware about sharing a, 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 a very validated or very, uh, apa tu, a validated information either in our social media. Don't share until you confirm or until you sure. Jangan kongsi, eh, apa, apa dia punya tagline? What is the tagline? Anybody remember? Tak pasti, jangan ah. kongsi. <laughs> jangan kongsi. If you're not sure, then do not share. Okay? So basically, what the, our our government trying to promote is the awareness of validate the information before you share, in which that one is one of the basic principles when we want to, to conduct research. Okay? Uh, eh? Research is need something that we share after we confirm our finding. Okay. Okay. So research. Okay. In summary, it is a process. It, it is a such a, it is a systematic process of discovery and advancement of human knowledge. Okay. So in research, need there will be a systematic process in which we will learn after this. So what are those systematic process? Okay. And then. The purpose, the main purpose is to discover and advance human knowledge or to discover new knowledge. Okay, so that's why knowledge is very, uh, apa tu, transforming and every day we can see, uh, we can find new knowledge and so on. Uh, so, this is sebenarnya part of research effort. Okay, so these are the characteristics of research. Okay, so research is generated by a specific research questions, hypothesis or problem. Okay, later on, I will introduce you to a few designs or research paradigms available when you want to conduct research. Okay, so whatever research that, whatever type of paradigm that you want to use, okay, but this research must be lead or must be started, uh, sorry, uh, must, be lead, uh, must be led by research question. Okay, or having issue. So, bila, bila kita, when we see there are issues either in practice, literature or theory, only then we can conduct research. We cannot conduct research until we figure out these issues first. Okay, so that's why we want, uh, 
when we want to conduct research, we need to figure out what are the issues first. Okay, the issues need to me, if you want to conduct uh, the study, try to look something that is really close to you so that you find it meaningful to you. Either it is uh, it is the problem related to your uh, to your workplace, related to your family. Okay, so that the findings later on really are really meaningful to you. Okay, doing research is not just fulfilling the academic requirement. Okay, either what level that you are you are in right now. So make sure that this is not the main purpose. Okay, and then uh, hypothesis. Okay, hypothesis. What is hypothesis? Can, uh, can everybody recall what we learned during our degree or during our uh, secondary school? Maybe. What is hypothesis? It's an assumation. To answer okay. your question, yeah. Assumation, you can say. Simulation or what? As, assumation, assumation. Estimation. Can be estimation. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. To, to answer our question. Okay, estimation. Assumption. Answer the question again. Is it uh, assumption, doctor? Yes, assumption. The, the most uh, up to accurate word is assumption or early assumption that we did, that we conduct or that we develop regarding a certain phenomena of interest. Early assumption in which this early assumption not, not yet proven either it is correct or not, but logically it follow the logic, uh, up to the logical statement. Follow logic but not yet been proven either it is true or not okay it is an early assumption okay and then research follows a specific plan or procedure in which if you want to conduct any research we it must have a process a systematic process step by step okay and then research aims at increasing understanding by interpreting facts and reaching conclusions based on those facts okay and then research requires reason argument to support conclusion this uh, this element eh, will be included in all the chapters that we discussed last week okay for example the num point number four ni, okay when you present your findings means that you need to provide justification or reason argument to, uh, to, uh, to support your, your conclusion regarding certain findings that you figure out after you completed your study Okay, and then research is reiterative in which it is based on previous knowledge. Okay, and then, okay, uh, this one, eh, uh, sometimes it depends on the design. Uh, yeah, it is based on previous knowledge. For example, eh, in some, uh, in certain area for when you use qualitative research, okay, you, some researcher conduct qualitative research because they are still no or limited findings regard uh, oh sorry relate uh, uh, there are no or limited explanation regarding a certain phenomena you look at the literature you look at from the theory then you thought you could uh, apa tu, you could found nothing no explanation regarding a certain area that you want to study okay the other eh memang ada the possibility that your research interest ni not yet been discovered earlier so that's why the researcher has to use qualitative okay but in general we can say that most of knowledge ni it is based on previous knowledge previous knowledge ni means that it is already been available it is already available in literature or uh, as a myth possible okay in theory or in practice sometimes it is uh, we can see we can uh, we can observe from uh, the practice but not yet been recorded in or documented Okay, and then which is aims to advance, but it may also develop further research questions, which in turn are answered by further research. Uh, so research ni sebenarnya dia berkait, it is continuous. You completed one study, then sebenarnya your study ni will advance or will encourage another research to continue the area. Dia berurutan sebenarnya. Eh? So that's why eh? one of the one of uh, the source that you can use to, fi uh, to figure out research interest is by looking at the end of the journal. At the end of the article, then you can see what are the recommendations made by the authors. What you, can, what you can continue to discover, what, you can, what are the areas to further your study. Okay, so these are the purpose of doing research. 
Okay, for personal. So I divide uh, the purpose of research ni according to three, uh, apa tu, three categories. The first one, personal. Okay, for, uh, for personal requirement, in which desire to change some existing situation. So something, if let's say you see something wrong with yourself, then you try to change it. Okay, and then curiosity about specific phenomenon or event. Possible, and then for career advancement. And then for practical, for administ uh, administrative or policy purposes, okay, I'm sure that currently, <coughs> Malaysia government pun are, looking, uh, are moving towards this one. Eh? Uh, in practical pun, they need to make, uh, they want to make sure that any evidence that, that been brought to, uh, to make a new policy, it is based on the proven data. Okay, I'm sure right now that what is our direction. Lah. Okay, and then focus on accomplishing something, meeting uh, some need, changing some situation or achieving some goals. Okay, and then for research purpose, this one is the basic one. Eh? Focus on understanding something, gaining some insight into what is going on and what is happening. Okay. And then, ni tak apa, laju lah sikit. Ini another uh, purpose of doing research according to Husi and Husi 1997. Okay. okay, so this one, the purpose when using qualitative research, qualitative design. Uh, eh? So uh, for those who are interested to, quali to use qualitative, for example, El Helwa, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, uh, so this is the purpose, probably her purpose of using the qualitative design. Okay. One of the biggest mistake eh, made by our student or most research, most novice researchers is they choose the design before the topic, before the area of interest. Uh, this one is the most biggest mistake. Don't do that. Okay, either you use qual or quant, qualitative or quantitative, they will always be their own risk. Okay, risiko tu kat mana-mana. Qualitative or quantitative ke risiko tu kat mana-mana. Okay, for qualitative, so probably the difficulties during your uh, data analysis. For, quali for quantitative, the difficulties more, uh, may be at your literature review stage. Uh, tapi during your data analysis and so on, it, it should be much easier lah. Okay, but whatever design that you want to embed within your study, it must be based on the topic of interest. What is the purpose, what is the first question that you ask to yourself? It is based on that one first. So that one, eh, that's why when um, when any student meet, come and meet me, so I ask first what they what they want to do, what they want to know. From there, we can propose the correct design. Uh, so that's because sometimes, eh, again, eh, bila kita nak buat research, even though see, this is a, a trial research for, for you to refresh whatever that you learned during your degree last time, but make sure it is meaningful to you. And then it is usable when you come back to your workplace later on. Okay? So, when you want to conduct a, a, a research in qualitative, so these are uh, uh, apa tu, uh, examples of uh, the purpose. For the first one, to understand the meaning. Why some people behave like this? Why are my organization oriented towards this direction? For example, so the question mostly started with why. Okay, understand the particular context. Okay, and then understanding unanticipated phenomena and influences to generate a new grounded theory. Okay, later on we can, we will discuss in detail this one regarding the inductive and deductive approaches in research in which it, uh, either inductive or deductive ni will also lead to a specific research paradigm. Okay, sama ada kita nak guna inductive ataupun deductive. Okay, and then most of quantitative, uh, qualitative and eh, not all, but there are few qualitative studies ni that will lead to grounded theory. Grounded theory ni means that a basic theory that will further be polished to develop a saturated new theory. Okay, qualitative ni sebenarnya kebanyakannya digunakan untuk membangunkan teori-teori baru. Meanwhile, quantitative study being used to confirm the theory. Okay, quantitative ni been used to confirm the theory. And then to develop causal explanation. Okay, it's possible uh, from the qualitative study ni, it is possible to uh, to lead to another quantitative research. 
And currently, the area of mixed method, mixed method, the combination of both quantity and qualitative in one study. Okay, uh, ni sebenarnya uh, apa tu semakin growing. Okay, in Malaysia lah. Kalau saya tengok, kita tengok dia punya trend. Okay, and importance of research. Uh, ni mesti lah eh. Research adds to our knowledge, address gaps in knowledge, expand new knowledge, replicate knowledge, add voices of interest, uh, sorry, add voices of individuals to knowledge. Uh, what is replicate knowledge? What is replication, knowledge replication? Ha, saya sampai jumpa. What is replication? Okay, and then research helps improve practice. Okay. Educators gain new ideas for their job. Okay, educators gain new insight into approaches. Educators can connect with other educators, research Research help inform policy debates. Research allows people to wake different perspective on issues. Research enable people to make informed decision regarding policy. Ini contoh dia lah, importance of research. Okay, tadi just now we did, we said that the, the main purpose of research need to generate new knowledge. So what is knowledge? is knowledge common sense versus knowledge is it common sense equals or similar or different with knowledge kita nak jawab nanti you all jawablah sendiri ha. knowledge facts information facts information uh, experience can also jadi knowledge juga kan can be experience what about experience. common sense common sense common sense pun knowledge juga lah kan so macam if you want to touch uh, iron kan panas so macam bila dah kita touch sekali so panas in the future we we, we won't touch our iron anymore something like that something like that so meaning that knowledge ni can be generated based on experience and can be developed from common sense possible but common sense is not necessarily be a new knowledge. Not necessarily, but possible. Okay, so characteristics of knowledge. Huh. Knowledge, it must be a reliable evidence. It must come from a reliable evidence. Okay, reliable evidence. Induction has reliable theory. By the way, what is theory? Theory. Yeah, Supposition. Ramzi. Huh? Supposition. 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 Hmm. Alagi yang terlalu tepat tak? <laughs> Supposition. Lagi? Principle. Explain from uh, other people. Explain uh, apa tu? Apa explain from other people? Apa depan tu? Something, something that has been explained. Something information that, has been that uh, information. Okay, lagi. Principle. Principle. Explanation. Principle. Principle. Okay, uh, theory ni, it is an explanation, proven explanation regarding certain phenomenon. Uh, okay, it is a proven explanation regarding a certain phenomenon. Dia dah proven. So, kalau kita tengok, eh, if you when you read your literature, literature review, you can see model. Kan, dekat section literature review, under the section, because I'm sure, eh, I'm sure that you are quite familiar with journal article. So, when I give example, then I mostly, most of the time, I refer to journal article. So, when you see under the literature review section, then you, you will be exposed to a few theories that may be used regarding that theory. Rega sorry, regarding that study. Okay, particularly in any social science research, you can see most, I can say that, um, 
most of the studies ni they will provide you with theory. Theory ni is something that already been proven for so many time last last time. <laughs> they have been proven previously. Okay, and then the finding is solid. Solid regard. Uh, sorry, kalau, yeah. Kalau kalau unproven, that means it's still uh, masih identify as hypothesis lah. It is possible a hypothesis or model. Ah, eh? model. Ah, so kalau dalam uh, dalam akademia, eh, you can see there are stages. The differences between model and theory. Theory ni adalah something yang solid in which theory ni um, the explanation is there. Okay, generalization is there. Okay, the general explanation is there. The purpose, uh, apa tu, the, uh, the rule of researcher ni just to make to make a certain uh, situation ni specific. And then you try to use that general explanation to that specific phenomenon. But in model ni, model ni, it, it is in a validating stage, in testing stage. Kalau teori ni dia dah memang solid, find uh, dia punya explanation tu memang macam gitu for that situation. For example, social exchange theory. Okay, for social exchange theory, for for information to be uh, apa tu for behavior to, behavioral change to be happen, so it must be uh, 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 an information or an interaction changes between two people. For example, this one according to so, so, uh, social exchange theory (SET). For example. Dia memang kata macam tu. So because it been proven previously, kalau untuk satu behavior berubah, berlakunya sesuatu tingkah laku, okay, dia akan ada interaksi. Then the process of interaction, it will involve the information changes, for example. Attitude, attitudinal uh, sharing, for example. Practical sharing, practical changes. Uh, these are elements under SET. Tapi kalau ada model contohnya, Uh, TAM model ke TAM model ke you can see it, it is actually in the stage of testing testing means that try and error what is correct or what wrong what is wrong okay so kalau in your study if you are interested to use the quantitative study then make sure uh, the main theory that you use to support your study is theory unless the theory is not uh, available in your area then only then you may Uh, then you may consider to use model. Uh, eh? No, I mean, yeah. let me see a clarification. Yes. Uh, the model is something in this. Uh, model is in the state of testing something, while theory already supported by evidence and uh, other bukti kukuh lah. But then in academia, how 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 we want to to differentiate? Sometimes I can see in the article a. Uh, Uh, for example, Kurt Lewin model or Kurt Lewin theory. So, hmm. tapi isi dalam dia macam Sama. similar model and theory again. So, how, how we want to differentiate this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Then you try to use the most recent article. So, which one they use? Either the model or the theory. Because before a, a model, or, uh, before a theory becomes a theory, it started with model. Uh, maybe long time ago because it is still in the process of testing so that's why the author used the model instead of the theory uh, eh? so use the recent term okay uh, doctor yes uh, is model is model equivalent to prototype mm. kalau kalau uh, kita 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 build up something there will be a prototype before we yes, we yes, come yes, out with the yes, real yes Yes, Ramzi. Ah, still in the prototype. Ah, maksudnya dalam testing lagi. Betul ke salah? Betul ke salah? Okay. So we have we already have Prof Ismi. Okay. Ha, just on the right time, Prof. <laughs> so in last in last class, eh, I always leave this section to Prof Ismi. Ah, because uh, knowledge generation process ni to me it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a quite a detailed topic that requires detailed explanation. Prof, uh, can I leave this section to you, Prof? <laughs> Prof, masuk on time. Okay, knowledge generation process. Prof, ada tak? Prof? Dah terkeluar balik. Mana? Tak ada, dah terkeluar. It's okay. <coughs> So not uh, in generating new knowledge, eh, they, these are the basic process that 
either we uh, either we aware or not, but we went through this process. Okay, so the first one ontology. Okay, ontology ni it is related to the study of the nature of reality. Okay, so it is a set of belief about what the world we are studying actually is. For example, is reality objective and independent of our perception of it. Okay, this one eh, ontology, it's relate to what type of research that we want to study. What is the first question that we ask regarding a certain phenomena that we want to study ni? Okay, they kata it is constructed by those who experience it. Does it exist apart from our experience of it? Uh, ini ontologi. Eh? So, dia kata it is the study about the nature of reality. So, if you see a certain phenomena, okay, we want to learn, okay, what is the reality? What is the situation? What is the explanation that can best explain about this phenomena? Okay, uh, then next one is epistemology. Okay, epistemology ni follow from the ontology. It is about the study of what we can know about reality and is dependent in many ways on what you believe reality to be. For example, can we generate unbiased, generalizable knowledge about the world or is this knowledge specific to a particular time and place? First study, the first the question that we ask. The second one ni, okay, the knowledge that we want to generate in, is it applicable to most people? Okay, or it is only applicable to the studied population. Uh, this one they can relate to the uh, to the uh, to the method of a sampling that we use. Okay, it can relate it, it can be related to the purpose of we conduct study. Either in qual, for example, if you conduct a qualitative study. Your main purpose is not generalization because you just want to learn this particular group. For example, you want to study about people living with HIV. Okay, why they uh, apa tu? Why they why what are the experience of people living with HIV ni? Why, uh, when they want to apply for the job, for example, apa dia punya experience? And this experience on, only applicable for people living with HIV, not general population. The specific one. Okay. But if let's say your interest is you want to make generalization from the population, from the study sample to the population, then you should embed or use a specific design. Okay. They are can relate. Okay. Next one, axiology. It, it, uh, in which is in an essence the aims of your research. Okay. Okay. And then, and receive a little less attention than the other three in the list. In a basic sense, what are you trying to do? Do you do you try to explain and predict the world or are you only seeking to understand it? Ha, dia macam lebih kurang sama dengan epistemology. Okay, tapi dia ni relate to uh, the overall context of our study. Prof, are you there? Prof is me. Yes, I'm here, Dr. Nami. Uh, prof. Prof, actually. Handphone, handphone tak boleh masuk. Handphone tak boleh masuk. So, oh, yeah. pakai pakai laptop, laptop pun boleh. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Sorry, Prof. So, actually, we are at the stage of knowledge generation process. So, if you may add okay. in this part, I strongly apa to appreciate lah. I really appreciate for oh. this part lah. This what what we discussed macam last year. Macam I really need your help in this part. Uh, but Prof boleh explain detail lagi regarding ontology, epistemology, axiology and method. So for me, method is the less important but most discussed. Uh, kalau kita buat research ni, banyak yang kita discuss punya method. Tapi kurang on this three. So basically, it is related to how we are going to conduct our study. Uh, so Prof, if you may, um, if you want to Sekejap add... Sekejap sikit je eh. Uh, boleh Prof, please. Just a little lah, just a little insyaAllah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nomi. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good evening, everyone. Well, basically, of course, uh, method. Uh, if you look at this uh, knowledge generation process, methodology will be the you know ultimately the the you know the uh, not to say final lah, but actually after you have considered your ontology, epistemology, and axiology, then you decide on. Uh, which one would be the most appropriate uh, methodology to be used in your research, you know? So for example, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, we 
we ask the question, uh, we ask the ontological question first. So um, it depends, you know, if you ask, uh, if we work backward, you know, those who are doing quantitative, you know, uh, because we, we believe that uh, uh, reality is objective. Uh, there's certain rule that govern, uh, you know, uh, variables, uh, uh, this uh, plus this will cost this, you know, uh, uh, whereas uh, uh, another ontological uh, understanding is that uh, reality is not uh, is not objective and it is uh, independent or, or somewhat uh, subjective. You know, so in in qualitative, for example, when you ask qualitative researchers this ontology uh, question, we believe in multiple realities. Uh, the only one reality actually is in the hand of God. You know, when 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 you talk about human, uh, no one can say his or her reality is the definite truth as compared to the others. You know, because we believe that uh, realities are in the eyes of the beholder. Uh, okay, so that's why we don't we don't uh, go for trying to uh, come up with rules, trying to come up with uh, uh, determine determining this will cause this. Uh, because we always believe in subjectivity and in life uh, there are certain things which are uh, objective and there are certain things which are subjective we have to accept that so basically moving from our understanding and our stand uh, of reality uh, then we go to epistemology uh, okay so when when we, when we talk about uh, epistemology you have gone into uh, how 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 are how are you going to know the the, the reality uh, based on a certain set of questions or you leave it to your uh, respondent your, or your informants to tell you and together you and the uh, the people that you are researching on co construct and co create the knowledge uh, okay so if you believe that uh, you know as a researcher uh, and you, you strongly believe in what we call this deductive reasoning and thinking. Okay, you want to confirm. So you have something, you have certain hypotheses, you want to confirm by asking others, uh, then uh, you might go for uh, you know, a quantitative punya, uh, epistemological uh, mode. You know? But for to some of us, uh, we believe that uh, Epistemologically, we we don't go for the positivistic punya thinking, meaning to say that you come with deductive, but we believe more in inter interpretivism. That is, we believe in uh, inductive uh, reasoning, meaning to say that you share uh, feedback from various people, and then after that you come up with certain conclusion about any uh, research question or research objective that uh, you want to address. Uh, then move from epistemology to axiology. So that's why in axiology, uh, this will uh, influence the way you write your research questions. If you notice, uh, there are different ways of writing research questions in quantitative in, and in qualitative. Even though you are researching on the same uh, classroom or you are researching on the same group of people or you are researching on the same process. Because if you come from the positivist uh, epistemology and, and ontology, uh, you already have certain uh, rules uh, and certain hypotheses that you want to test. So you list it down and you go and ask to get responses from your uh, from your respondents. You know, but if you feel like I do not want uh, I do not want to uh, seek for confirmation. But what I want to do is to, to co-construct uh, the thing that I want to explore uh, by sharing uh, you know, the conversation with uh, my respondents. Uh, then your question will tell them it for something that is more open, something is, that is more subjective. Uh, maybe, um, uh, inshallah, nanti when uh, Dr. Nomi give me the chance, I will share with you, you know, how the same setting, the same 
phenomenon or the same event or the same process can be addressed either quantitative or qualitatively. And bear it in mind, uh, so when you talk about quantitative and qualitative too, we have gone into methodology. Lah, uh, kan? So when it comes to methodology, then you know, because you have to remember your methodology are guided by your research questions. If your research questions are tailor-made towards a positivist punya research questions, you want to determine, you want to identify, uh, you know, you want to, to look at, you know, uh, how, how far the hypothesis can be tested, how far the hypothesis is, uh, can be accepted. Uh, you, have, you already have the set of rules, uh, then the methodology, most importantly, go for quantitative. But if you want to find answers that is uh, not yet uh, determined in literature, you want to just explore, you want to just uh, gather, you know, uh, together with your uh, respondents, then only you develop an answer to your research questions. Uh, that is what the qualitative researchers normally uh, go for. So bear in mind, we are not saying that which uh, one is better than the other. There's no such thing as quantitative is better than qualitative or qualitative is better than quantitative. Both are important in life. Uh, both complement one another actually if you really want to address uh, issues holistically. That's why in big research project normally it is uh, not uh, apa ni? Uh, it is possible, it is not uh, uncommon that we have both approaches together so that at the end of the day we can address uh, the objectivities and the subjectivities of a phenomenon or, uh, or an event. Okay. Dr. Nomi, okay tak Dr. Nomi, setakat tu? Okay, sangat Prof. Okay. Very clear. Uh, InsyaAllah, I think Dr. Nomi is good that in, in our class, we appreciate. Uh, kan? We are not forcing you. Uh, mana dia, uh, research method mesti kuanti saja tak? Uh, we are we are, we are ex, uh, exposing you to both. Uh, okay, but at the end of the day, of course, it depends on what you want to know, how you want to understand reality. Uh, whether you want uh, to, you know, to just confirm, uh, you know, in, uh, deductively, or you want to explore inductively, we leave it to you. Okay, terima kasih, Dr. Nomi. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, this part ni memang saya akan bagi dekat Prof, sebab dia punya nampak lah, dia punya level Prof tu. InsyaAllah. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Dia punya explanation tu clear kat sini. Okay, so next one. Okay, this is the connection and eh? the connection between all, all, all the ologies together. Eh, betul ni, eh, Prof? Eh? <laughs> betul, betul, betul. InsyaAllah. Okay, so commercial, uh, the, the differences between commercial versus academic research. So what you can see based, uh, based on your observation, because I'm sure that you already see what uh, apa tu, you have experienced both either commercial or academic research. So what you can see the differences between the two. Saja tanya. Commercial research. Hmm. Commercial research ni, most of the time, they're not, not necessarily been supported by theories lah. Uh, but in academic research, it is a must. Okay. And then in terms of the steps, uh, the step ni pun not necessarily follow a systematic step or scientific step kalau in commercial research because it is more uh, based uh, apa tu, the basis is more on the practical, the logic lah eh, kalau in commercial research. Okay, okay. So this what what uh, Prof. Ismi mentioned just now, inductive and deductive reasoning. Okay, uh, eh. so induction ni referred to as moving from the specific to general. So the research paradigm that you pick ni, letter uh, apa tu, it is uh, the intention either from the specific to the general, while deduction begins with the general and ends with the specific. So this one, if I may say, it is related to lah either, either the selection of qualitative or quantitative to your study. Okay, if you, if you, if you use the qualitative, for example, okay, we, uh, based on what Prof. Ismail said just now, it is based on inductive. Okay, in which uh, you collect the data from a very specific population, Okay, from the specific group, but in terms of the application, it can be very wide. Okay, that one for qualitative study. Okay, meanwhile, 
for the uh, for the quantitative eh you start with general something that is general but in terms of application it is only applicable to the study population uh, itu the main differences between quali and quant okay then the main difference between inductive and deductive reasoning is that inductive reasoning aims at developing a theory not all but memang most of the in a qualitative study ni one of the reason is to develop a new theory while deductive reasoning aims at testing or confirm the theory that's why eh, in quantitative study it is a must it is a compulsory for you to support your study or your hypothesis with theory but in qualitative it is not necessary not necessary you not necessarily you have theory but possible at the end of your finding you are proposing a new theory a grounded theory okay then arguments based on experience or observation are best expressed inductively while arguments based on laws rules or other widely accepted principles are best expressed by deductive okay the first one ni uh, experience observation interview uh, this one it is a method but it is mostly related to qualitative Meanwhile, the one that is based on the solid finding, uh, solid, not solid, it is based on rules, procedures, uh, it is best okay, represented by quantitative. Okay. The, the inductive approach consists of three stages in general. First one, observation. Observe, you observe the situation, the phenomena, and then you see the pattern, you record the pattern. And then lastly, you develop a theory to explain that phenomenon that you have observed. Okay, next one, the deductive research approach consists of four stages. You start with an existing theory. You review your literature, you come up with an early assumption about a certain phenomena supported by the theory. And then you formulate a hypothesis based on existing theory, collect data to test the hypothesis, and then lastly, you analyze the result. And then does the data reject or support the hypothesis that you developed earlier? Okay. Okay, so these are the general processes of research. Okay, select topic, review the literature, developmental of theor development of theoretical and research framework. But this one prone towards quantity. Eh? Quality sebenarnya dia ada adjustment sikit. Nanti insyaAllah Pro Ismi boleh tambah-tambah sikit lah. Okay, and then clarification of research questions or hypotheses, research design, data collection, data analysis and drawing conclusion. Okay. So, kalau ikut uh, Kuma ni, okay, based on Kuma ni, he, uh, he divided the research processes into three phases. Okay, they are the design, uh, deciding, uh, deciding phase, planning phase and conducting phase. What, how and collect. Okay, so in specific, he, he operationalized the methods ni into eight different steps. Okay, uh, the first step ni formulate a research problem. Okay, so we, you consider a considering consideration and steps in formulating a research problem, then in which uh, you may consider any variables or hypotheses, but sometimes for a qualitative study, eh, you do not have any hypothesis, you do not have any variable. You only have one phenomenon that you are interested to understand further. Okay, and then you conceptualizing a research design, meaning that you try to refer to your literature. Is there any explanation regarding the phenomena? Okay, you collect information and so on. Construct an instrument for data collection. As what I said, and this step ni is prone towards quantitative. Okay, for qualitative, sebenarnya the process ni can be transforming. Eh? Transforming at the term where, prof, in quantitative, in quality. Qualitative? Uh, the, uh, the process is transforming. Process dia to evolve, eh, transforming eh? They're not... Uh, they're hmm. Evolving. Evolving, yes. Oh, for transforming. Evolving, sorry. Uh, the term is evolving in qualitative, eh? but in quantitative, they are structured like this. Okay. And then you select the sample, writing a research proposal, collecting data, process data, writing a research report. Okay. Okay, to decide what you want to study. So, 
identify you what, what you intend uh, to, uh, to research, decide what you want to find out about. Okay, be specific, think and then think to consider include your financial resources, time available, super, supervisors, knowledge and expertise. Okay, so this one, eh, identify what you intend to research. Okay, you may figure out start from now. Okay, uh, based, uh, you may consider your area of study HRD. So what we already discussed last week, the four areas under HRD. So you, you may consider any topic that can be related to that, area, that four areas. Okay, and then decide what you want to find out about. Okay, and then be specific. Be specific ini because sometimes it will be connected to the financial resources, the time available. For example, if you are doing your master uh, MHRD, for example, master by coursework. So make sure that all the process need can be completed within two semesters. Okay, do not be too ambitious that like you are going to change the world. Because sometimes we conduct the study need just to add a tiny new knowledge. Kecil je, but it's already a, a, a novelty. Okay. And then try to match with your supervisor's knowledge and expertise. Uh, so that you can get a better, uh, better facilitation during your uh, research journey. Okay. And then another tip is try to figure out something that is interesting to you, not to your supervisor. Okay, because uh, we said when we conduct study, the researcher know best about his or her study. Dia yang tahu sebenarnya. Because he he or she is the one who do the literature review, the searching, the searching effort, uh, uh, apa tu, the combining, the paraphrasing, and so on. Dia yang tahu. Either that the studies are lacking, the, the supervisor ni only facilitate or give advice, give the direction to you. Okay, don't make your supervisor as the author of your thesis. Okay. Next one, planning a, a research study, okay, in which you conceptualizing a research design. You select an appropriate research method or design to arrive at valid findings, comparison, and conclusion. After you figure out your RQ, for example, RQ tadi you connected. It is connected to your problem, eh? Based on the problem that you develop the research questions, okay. The research question ni mostly been uh been apa tu? They are be appreciated in qualitative. In quantitative name, we mostly use objective. Uh, sometimes we just write our research question in our quantitative research, but most of the time we only refer to objective. But in qualitative study, okay, we use research question instead of research objective. Okay, and then. This step explain how you will find answer to your research question. Okay, so. Then it must be valid, workable, and manageable. <clears throat> Need to strong uh, reason for selecting a particular design. Either you use quality or quantity. Later on, in which in which this in each design, eh, there will be a more specific research design. You need to provide justification why you select that particular research design. Okay, and then you able to justify your selection aware of its strength, weaknesses, and limitation. Okay, next one, constructing an instrument for data collection. So this one, saya, I will present on quantitative part, but probably Prof. Ismi will add the instrument regarding qualitative. Okay, because in quantitative study, the main instrument is the questionnaire. Okay, the questionnaire, lah. most of the time we use questionnaire to collect the data in quantitative. But in qualitative study, the main instrument is the researcher himself or herself. Lain, eh? In quantity, questionnaire, the instrument. In quality, the researcher is the instrument. Okay, so a research, a research tools or research instrument referring to anything that becomes a means of collecting information for your study. So for quantitative study, okay, the, the accuracy of findings that we collect depends on the accuracy of the instrument that we select to measure the construct. Okay, but the accuracy of findings in qualitative may depend on the skills or competency of the researcher. Uh, to probe during the interview session, to observe, to take note, okay? 
And then, okay, so we can use observation forms, okay, interview schedules or questionnaire and interview as a means to collect our data. Okay, and then field testing or pilot testing, a research tool is an integral part of instrument construction. This one mostly related to quantitative line eh? because in qualitative, there will be no testing. Ada tak ada testing. In qualitative ni, uh, we when we start our data collection ni, when we start te uh, testing the research protocol, okay, so basically we already start the data collection process. But in quantitative, there will be one small study that we conduct to test the reliability of the instrument. Now, this one, in no worries, eh? we will discuss further detail uh, later. Okay, as a rule, the pretest of a research instrument should not be carried out on the sample of your study population, but on a similar population which you are not proposing to study. This one on uh, applicable to quantitative. Okay, when you select a, a sample to be uh, to conduct your pilot study, then this sample, this small sim sample, not necessarily comes from the same population as your study of uh, as your uh, 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 the population understudy, eh? not necessary, but they share similar characteristic. Okay, but when you testing. Um, the research protocol. Research protocols ni meanings that the probing question re, uh, you develop according to your research question in qualitative study. Okay, you want to check the accuracy of the question to be asked to your respondent. So then you conduct you conduct a, 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 a pre-study before the actual one. Okay, because you want to improve. Okay, the, probably your uh, apa tu your research question, your research protocol ni, you want to improve so that you it will lead you to the right answer. Okay. Okay, then step four, select a sample. Okay, so there are two key aims to avoid bias and a maximum precision from sample to population. So this one also applicable only to quantitative. Uh, eh? In quantitative, as much as possible, we want to avoid bias when selecting any sample. So that's why we make sure that everybody has similar chance to be involved in the study. Okay, 50% to be involved, 50% not to be involved. So everybody, everybody has equal chance to be involved or not to be involved in the study. Meanwhile, in qualitative study, we select our sample according to the focus of our study. We purposely select. So that's why in, quali uh, in qualitative, we, we use the purposive sampling. Okay, so that the findings later on fulfill the main purpose of the study. If you want to study the best regarding the traits of best leader, then you look for the best leaders in Malaysia based on the network that you have. Okay, you start with uh, the, uh, apa tu, uh, the minister, for, uh, start with the minister, for example, the first, then the, the first minister will introduce to the second minister, okay, and so on. The best leader that you know, that one for quantity, qualitative. Yeah, El Helwa. Uh, for qualitative, if we purposely uh, select our respondent, uh, just uh, because we want to uh, make it uh, uh, parallel with our topic, there uh, the element bias, ke? no no bias element there. Ke, ke macam, macam mana? It is there and it can be avoided. Uh, so that's why the issue of trustworthiness, biasness no, will be addressed in qualitative. Because in qualitative, we cannot avoid that. Because this, the main purpose of the study conducted to understand this population. Memang the purpose of the study to conducted to understand the population. Uh, so that is why we say that in qualitative study, we have no intention to make generalization. The conclusion that we made only available, only applicable to the studied sample. Eh? Different with quantitative. So quantitative, we collect the sample in which we we, uh, we, uh, we pick the sample based on random sampling. Later on, the purpose is to make generalization to bigger population. So that is why we have to avoid bias. But in qualitative, we cannot avoid bias because to learn best about the population, we need to purposely pick the member within that population. Right? If let's say I want to understand about El Helwa, then I need to make sure that I pick 
someone uh, or, or people around you that could at best explain regarding you. Can you see the logic? Eh? Ah, so it is purposely, then we cannot avoid bias in qualitative, but we can add uh, uh, in terms of data validation, eh, data, data quality, eh, we can add the component of triangulation later on in data collection process. Uh, we need to make sure that the data that we collected eh, are consistent, uh, are, are, are trustworthy, uh, it is, uh, uh, apa tu, uh, uh, nantilah later on, uh, that one eh. Uh, later okay. detail, insyaAllah. Okay, but this one for quantitative. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry for interrupt. Uh, just tiba-tiba okay. terfikir uh, yang apa ni, uh, adakah kalau kita memilih qualitative, finding dia, maknanya result dia lebih tepat berbanding kalau kita memilih quantitative, which is kita menggunakan questionnaire and it's a random punya ni. So, dia lebih dia tidak berapa ni. Adakah begitu? Okay. Uh, so, I repeat again what Prof Ismi. Prof Ismi, you want to say something? Uh, uh. Uh, boleh lah. Sebenarnya, uh, actually, um, nak kata tepat tu, actually, is very is very difficult lah. Uh, what what I can say is, uh, quantitative ni, the strength is, uh, how how wide you can go you know the breadth you know you you can uh, you punya uh, conclusion to is based on quantity lah kan uh, so so you have certain number that you are convinced and you can uh, make your conclusion based on that okay because your your understanding is that uh, with a, a big number of people saying the same thing okay uh based on on this you can hypothesize that this is how the population you know uh, feels uh, about something okay but in qualitative uh, we are going for the the depth you know kedalaman so 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 that's why if you want to go for the depth you cannot have a, a, a too big sample kalau tidak phd 10 tahun kan phd 15 tahun so that's why your sample will be much smaller because you really want to go uh, very deep uh, okay so an analogy yeah boleh ada tanomi an analogy that we, that we normally use quantitative ni swimming pool uh, okay uh, because your concern tu how many you nak masukkan ramai-ramai dalam swimming pool tu uh, so so that's why dia punya dia kena uh, dia kena dia kena luaslah luas okay Alright, tapi kualitatif ni dia perigi, dia telaga, uh, dia dalam. So, so you can imagine if you want to uh, this answer normally I give when student kata dia nak buat mix method lah, kan? So kalau betul betul nak mix method, you can imagine uh, sama ada swimming pool yang dalam ataupun telaga yang luas. Uh, tu uh, itu kalau mix method yang betul betul, because um, ultimately, when you talk about quantitative, uh, is the breadth or the coverage. Uh, and so, kalau you punya sample tu memang very good, can really represent the bigger population, uh, then we are convinced with your findings. Yang qualitative pula, if you can go very deep into the attention to detail, because memang your question, your question is not so much about how many people agree. Your question is very much more about describing uh, the people's experiences. Uh, so that's why you cannot go very deep. You tak boleh based on uh, responses, kan? like a scale and do it. You have to be very highly descriptive. So that's why sample dalam uh, qualitative ni different. Okay, satu lagi analogy. Boleh ya? Uh, Tuan Nomi? Um, dia quantitative ni um uh, kalau kalau saya salah uh, doktor Nomi betulkan eh? dia kalau ramai kata orang tu salah uh, ada possibility memang orang tu salah uh, tapi kalau kualitatif ni uh, kita tak perlu banyak sampel tapi kalau yang kita dapat sampel tu semua orang-orang yang berada dalam di tempat kejadian yang boleh describe dan orang tu memang buat salah uh, kita dah terima dah because 
there are certain criteria that is there are evidence that these are the people that were at the scene uh, so that's why they orang boleh kata yang orang ni memang buat salah uh, tapi kalau macam kuantitatif ni kalau dua tiga orang aja tak cukup uh, kita kena tanya ramai-ramai kalau ramai kata kami suka uh, nilofa uh, nilofa lah yang orang paling suka <laughs> kan tapi kalau ramai yang dah mula bergerak ke arah Pazura, ah Pazura lah pula sekarang ni favorite berbanding Nilofa. Ah contoh dia macam itulah. Tapi kalau qualitative kita tak go for that one because qualitative we believe in the description and beauty of the eye of beholder. You tanya Fatah of course lah dia kata Pazura kan. Ah kalau you tanya apa nama? Ah lupa ada suami Nilofa ni. Lupa ada Faris, apa Faris? Puris. Puris ah tanya Puris of course lah dia kata Nilofa lagi lawa daripada Pazura because beauty is in the eye of the beholder is multiple reality. Ah uh, kan? Uh, so we to faham eh? Boleh. Okay, faham. Thank you Prof. Thank you Dr. Insya-Allah. Uh, okay um um Dr. Um, Prof I would like to talk about um the, the quantitative and qualitative. Um should I go ahead? Okay please please yeah. Okay thank you. Um when you talk about the quantitative you are talking about the 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 you're following this the structure based on on the numbering the statistics you follow the you're not follow this this research does not follow a critical or a descriptive or a detailed you know um and research because the quantitative um is very very objective and uh the the quantitative can the example here um when you see a tree uh, a, a very big tree the quantitative is only interested in the in the tree that is the body the structure of the tree why the qualitative has to do with what makes this tree grow you know what are the nutrients what are the minerals resources yeah. that, that help the tree to grow that is the um the in depth you know the in depth yeah, research yeah. then um Now, I will also say that the uh, the quantitative um, this measures um, variables in a, in a means of uh, it do, it does not test variable. That is why it is more of objective. It just comes and tell you that oh, it 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 it's easily it easily takes conclusion on a particular you know, on a particular preamble you know or a particular subject you know it does not look at those things um critically you know from the um like like from the beginning of or like from the top roots it does not look at it critically why when we talk about uh, qualitative a qualitative research it this this has to do with um it can be once um when you say that um, mr john goes to school and when you say that mr john is always in class all the time you, you know Now the, the 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 qualitative there has to do with what makes Mr. John to come to school early. You see, what are what are the things that makes Mr. John come to school school early? Why the quantitative is only interested that Mr. John is in class. <laughs> okay, Steve, can that I can I respond it. to that? Okay, okay can sir. I respond to that? I think you yeah. you have somehow helped uh, to to you know to clarify you know like what I said just now. Again, we go back to what questions we want to ask. So, okay. uh, based on your explanation just now, if your questions are very, very much about the what, you know, uh, descriptive, yeah, the what, the how, and the why, uh, then qualitative might be your consideration. Uh, okay. okay. Because <laughs> your 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 main intention is is the descriptive part, you know. But yes. if you talk about uh. Uh, market survey you know if you talk about you want to see the trend you know okay. uh, you want to see how how uh, population view about certain thing uh, you quantitative is the best because you basically you are depending on the numbers to 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 see how majority feel about this how majority feel about that you know so that's why it depends on what question you ask um, in both, that aspect uh, yeah can you say that um like um in that aspect can you say that quanti um, quantitative is a primary source of data can you actually um, say conclude that 
quantitative is a primary source of data. Well, basically both uh, both uh, can be primary because if you if you talk about you know you you distribute questionnaires and you get direct responses from your respondents, that is primary source. And for qualitative, if you interview direct, it is a primary source. So actually both you know both uh, uh, can be primary depending on how you access your uh, your research uh, respondents. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, so it's just a matter of if you ask, if you, you want, if you want to go for trend, you want to go for uh, you know how the population view. Uh, if you want to do polling, so that that is where quantitative really help because you want to see how the majority feels. Yeah, about yeah, yes, yes, like voting in an election. Yes, especially for yeah. trend. Trend, trend yes, qualitative. Yes. You cannot do through qualitative. You must do quantitative. Then you can quantitative. See. Yes. Uh, if you want to do mapping, quantitative is the best. Uh, that means um, both methods are very important depending on the yes, usage. Depending and, uh, okay. on what questions uh, uh, you want to answer. On questions. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Austin, and everyone. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, for... uh, yeah. Huh? Next Dr. Okay. Uh, yeah. Either okay. Dr. Nomi or Prof. Ismi. Uh, so the, if the question mark is uh, which, uh, which uh, the question mark is which, which one is uh, better in order for us to, to, to differentiate between two things? Lah. That one is uh, considered as a quantitative uh, uh, research, is it? Uh, Dr. Nomi, sebelum saya jawab, bagi Dr. Nomi dulu. Okay, can you complete which one? Ah, uh, example, which group uh, contoh, is better contoh, than which another group? Uh, Kita ambil benda yang mudah lah. Which is uh, uh, which one is better lah? Sa Johor atau Sa Penang? Something like that. Ah, ah. Which factors yang lebih menyumbang kan? Ah, that one kita akan kepada kuantitatif lah kan? Betul tak? Mostly ah. quanti. Ah, kalau yang yeah. quali, the three question yeah. that Prof. Ismi ah. mentioned it just yeah. now. But depending juga, sometimes which also applicable in quali depend juga. Saya yeah. rasa lah in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but if let's say it's very objective like that, which group better than uh, uh, two, that one yes. automatically quanti. Yes, uh, because uh, the word here, uh, yang Ram, Ramzi tanya tu, when you want to identify, you want to determine, uh, memang quanti lah, best lah. Uh, you dah ada benda dah, you nak determine je. Okay, Nilofa ke Fazura? Uh, sekarang ni, dah ada dah. Uh, kan? Tapi kalau baru nak explore, siapa yang top sekarang ni dalam kalangan apa ni celebrity celebrity tanah air ni kan uh, so tak ada siapa-siapa kita nak compare kita go inductive dulu kita interview je dulu uh, from there then baru you tahu siapa rupanya bukan dua orang tu dah dah dah, dah, dah pindah ke lain dah kan uh, dah pindah dah Mira Filza pun orang tak ingat dah kan ni baru punya tanah nama saya pun tak tahu uh, kan ada yang baru baru ni kan uh, and okey insyaallah nah okey thank you prof okay. all right thank you so much okey so next one, okay, types of sampling design. So it also depends on the research design that we that we apply. Either we want to apply the random or probability sampling design. Okay, or in uh, qualitative, we may consider to use uh, purposive. Okay, in uh, there, it is quite similar. Eh? In quantity, we use the non-random or non-probability. But the term in qualitative, we use as purposive. We, we prefer to use the word purposive sampling in qualitative. But somehow it, uh, it represents the same thing. But to make sure that it, it quality looks compared to quantity look. If you if we use uh, the term non-randomly, it's more on quantitative. Okay, statistical. Eh? Okay. And then on mixed sampling design, you make the combination of a few uh, uh, sampling design in your study. It is possible. Eh? Okay, and then type of sampling strategy used will influence your ability to make generalizations from the sample finding about the study population and the type of statistical test you can apply to your data. So that's why eh, and our objective just now will determine the, uh, our, our design and then the design we select, we determine how we select our sample and then what, how, how we select our sample will determine the generalization power of our study, okay? But doesn't matter, if you use quality, then because your main interest is not for generalization, so no worries for that, okay? And then it also will influence how your data going to be analyzed, okay? Or if you, let's say, you use the qualitative, then your wording, uh, your, 
uh, intercept tu, the intercept tu, the transcribing data ni, okay, will be analyzed according to the its own method. Ada method dia, and info quantitative dan mostly we use IBM SPSS, okay, to analyze our data, okay. And then writing a research proposal, okay, the purpose is to tell a reader about our research problem and how you are planning to investigate. So this is the main purpose of this class lah, eh? at the end of the semester, hopefully you are, you are, you, you manage to come up with one research proposal. Okay, then research proposals should describe what you are proposing to do, how you plan to proceed, which is the method, and then why you selected the proposed strategy meaning that the justification of the selected strategy uh, design. Okay, and then information needed in a research proposal. A statement of the objective of the study, a list of hypotheses if you are interested, uh, if you are testing any, this one for quantitative. Okay, the study design you are proposing to use, the setting for your study, okay, the research instruments you are planning to use, information on the size and sampling design, okay, this uh, for the qualitative, so the sampling size ni only being only can be determined after you completed your study, or you can determine the study the sample uh, the sample size ni according to the data saturation. Uh, Insyaallah we will discuss again later regarding the what is data saturation in qualitative. Then information on data processing procedures, how we are going to analyze our data. For quality, we have our own method. For quantity, we have our own method. Okay, and an outline of, of the proposed chapters for the report. Again, the studies problem and limitation and the proposed time frame. Okay, next one, conduct a research study. Okay, we start with collecting the data. This one, uh, that we go beyond the topic. Uh, we, we, we go uh, already beyond the course, this course. Lah, eh? So data collection methods. Okay, which is may include interviews. So interviews ni it can be used in both qual or quant, but mostly being preferred in quant because in quant you need to coding the findings from interview. So in which it is very complex to analyze the interview data for quantitative study. Okay, and then mail out a questionnaire for sure. This mostly been used in quantitative. Conduct nominal or focus group discussion, also mostly been used in quality, qualitative. Make observation, also in quality, or sometimes it, it is applicable in experimental design in quantitative study. Possible, eh? And then ethical considerations in data collection. Okay, and then processing and displaying data for qualitative. For quantitative, for mixed matter, inshallah, we will also share with you later on how you are going to process and display your data. Okay. So basically, so this is the summary of the research process. Started, we start with the problem, literature review, hypothesis, okay, for quantity design and conduct study, conclusion and report. So whatever it is, when should be your literature review start? Sekarang. Sekarang. When you, when you already figure out the, the focus of interest, then your literature review already started. Eh? Even though in our based on our format, literature review is our chapter two. But the literature review start right after you figure out the problem that you want to study. Or sometimes people will figure out the problem after they review the literature. Dua-dua pun possible. Okay, so the research process ni all include reading. Okay, they mesti, they akan involve reading. Okay. Okay, so these are the main areas uh, of research in HRD, eh? kita dah discuss last week. We have training and development, organizational development, career development, and community development. So you may pick any areas related to these four. Okay, and then you may match your research interest to any expert that we have in at our department. Okay, next one: ethical considerations in conducting research. Ah, ini kita habis awas kita. Sebab ni pun dah dua minggu dah ni. Topik ni ni. Okay. Okay. So these are a few considerations that we need to uh, that we need to uh, seek when we conduct 
any research eh so uh, ethic ni referring to the norms for conduct that distinguish between acceptable and unacceptable behavior Okay, dalam research ni kita tak boleh main sapu je semua boleh. Eh? Dia ada the do's and the don't. Okay, so the research ethics provides guideline for the responsible conduct of research in which it educates and monitors scientists conducting research to ensure a high ethical standard. Either we make sure that the, the, the data that we produce are from the validated source. Okay, and then ethical considerations in research design may include uh, when we want to pick our respondents, make sure that it is based on voluntary participation, either in qual or quant. Okay, we cannot force anybody to be included in our study. If the respondent refuse, then we move on and pick another person. Okay, we cannot force our uh, respondent. Involuntary participation and informed consent. So that's why in qualitative study, before you conduct any interview or observation, you need to prepare the informed consent form. Uh, the form you need to prepare. So then you collect the signature from your informant to make sure that they agree as a proof that the agreement between you and your respondent. Okay. And then deception in assigning respondents of the study confidentiality of our respondents information okay that's why uh, in quantitative both quanti uh, in qualitative we use pseudonym to replace the actual name of our respondents for example in quantitative as what we know the main in, uh, the main interest is for generalization so there is no uh, there is no way for us to represent our data individually because the uh, we, when we present a quantitative finding it is based on groups uh, so there is no way for us to identify the, fi uh, the finding to according to person. Eh? Okay, and then precisely how is the data being recorded? Okay, how we record our data. If let's say it, we, we record the, this, the interview, then it may lead to another question, how and where it is stored. Uh, for how long we keep that data, for example, who can access the data? The researcher only or the public? Okay, so we need to clearly mention this one in our uh, proposal. Then how long is the data held for? Maybe after five years then, it will be diminished ataupun it will be deleted. After the study completed, then the recording will be deleted. Right. So then we need to make things clear. So another ethical principle, including honesty. Honestly, uh, in reporting your data, result, methods, and procedures, and publication status, um, do not fabricate, falsify, or misrepresent your data. Okay, do not manipulate. Quantitative data ni, there are uh, uh, apa tu, a very wide tendency for the researcher to manipulate, but don't ever manipulate your data. Okay. And then objectivity, strive to avoid bias, for example, in experimental design, data analysis, data interpretation, peer review, personal decisions, grant writing, expert testimony, and other expert, other aspect of research. Okay, integrity, keep your promises and agreements, act with sincerity, strive for consistency of thought and actions. Okay, carefulness, avoid careless errors and negligence, carefully and critically examine your own work and the work of your peers, keep good record of research activities. Okay. For example, when you conduct the qualitative study, then you, you have the field note. Uh, field note and you, when you do the observation, for example, or the interview, then you have your field note. Okay. Keep, keep those field note uh, insecure or securely. Uh, eh? And then uh, openness uh, in sharing your data, results, ideas, tools or resources. Be open to criticism and new ideas. Okay, and then respect for intellectual property in which you honor the patents, copyrights, and other form of intellectual property. For example, when we use the instrument in quantitative data, so we make sure that we locate the credit correctly. Okay, and then do not use the unpublished data, methods, or results without permission. Okay, give credit where credit is due. Never plagiarize. Okay. Later, eh, when you submit your proposal, uh, so we follow the new rule uh, decided by the faculty, make sure that your turnity lesser than 25%. Okay, we do not accept any kind of plagiarism in research. Okay, 
And then confidentiality, we protect confidential communications such as paper or grants submitted for publication, personnel record, trade or military secret and passion records. Okay. And then responsible publication, publish in order to advance research and scholarship, not to advance just your own career. Avoid wasteful and duplicative publication. Duplicative ni means that you submit the similar article to two different journal publication. Okay, isu ni memang ada berlaku lah. Okay, and the responsible mentoring, help to educate, mentor and advise students, promote their welfare and allow them to make their own decision. Uh, so this one for supervisor lah eh. So we, we somehow the, uh, the supervisor ni, they have their own research interest. But uh, to, to make things ethical, so let the students choose what areas that they want to study. And then respect for cliques, respect your cliques and treat them fairly. Social responsibility, strive to promote social good and prevent or mitigate social harms through research, public education and advocacy. Okay, non-discrimination in which we avoid discrimination against cliques or students or the basis on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity or other factors that are not related to their scientific competence and integrity. And competence, we maintain and improve our own professional competence and expertise through lifelong education and learning. Take steps to promote competence in science as a whole, legality, know and obey relevant laws and institutional and governmental policies, animal care if, if applicable, and then human subject protection when conduct research on human subject. So make sure we minimize harms and risks and maximize benefits, respect on human dignity, privacy and autonomy. So you report what need to be reported uh, only in your findings or your proposal. Okay, so I thought that's all I could for today. Cukup lah eh, hari ni. Cukup eh. On the basic before next week, insyaAllah we will proceed uh, on the statement of problem, background of study and so on. InsyaAllah. Uh, Prof, uh, Ismi, do you have any more, uh, anything more to say? Um, okay, Dr. Nomi, insyaAllah. <laughs> I think for now, uh, this should be sufficient and maybe in next class, if I am uh, given the opportunity, I will just share, you know, uh, briefly, you know, how same uh, context and setting can be uh, addressed either quantitatively or qualitatively. Uh, InsyaAllah. Okay. Next week, Prof. Next week, InsyaAllah. InsyaAllah, InsyaAllah. So, any question from the crowd? Before we postpone our session to next week, um, doctor. Yes, yes. Okay, Zing Cheng. Um, um, and but the last week you recorded the 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 class video, but you haven't um submit and um, put an um, upload in the PB. So maybe later, can you can you post and um, upload all the video? Can. Sorry. Sure, sure, sure. I will share. I will share immediately because there's uh, some something happened technical error last week, but I managed oh, to okay, okay. handle it. I will share after the class. Hmm. Okay, sorry, doctor. Thank sorry. you. Any more question? Okay. Okay. So inshallah, we postpone our uh, our session to next week. Um, prof. Prof. Yes, yes, yes. Just Linda. Yeah, just to confirm next week's timing, uh, uh, is there any adjustments due to the fasting month? Okay, uh, good question. Promise me? <laughs> uh, inshallah, I, I, follow, I follow Sifu lah, inshallah. Uh, one of the prof Sifu saya. Okay, we try to make it uh. short and sweet, inshallah. We try to finish earlier lah, okay, uh, to make sure that ataupun, uh, sebab to compare to kita make it short and sweet, inshallah, eh? Around 7.30 ke? Uh, 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 <laughs> okay, boleh? Eh? Set down 7.30. Uh, eh? uh, lepas, after the fasting month, then we continue as usual lah. Uh, powerful lah. Powerful one and a half hour kan? Dr. Nomi eh? Yes. 6 to 7.30, high powered. High powered uh, <laughs> presentation. Mm -hmm. InsyaAllah. Okay, insyaAllah. Okay, boleh? 
Okay, so thank you so much guys. InsyaAllah see you next week. Take care. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Prof. 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 Thank you, Prof.